pet. Cat talk your cat. Time. Everyone talk good game, but it don't really face me. Nah, oh. the man that ain't mad like Max, the boy that's murky like Ace B. Never. And them guys walk the slide on the back, balling like a baby. Oi, oi, welcome to the Pep Talk UK Sports Podcast, the podcast that talks the major boxing and football news from around the globe, real points of view from a real panel, hashtag Real Talk on Pep Talk. Please subscribe to Pep Talk UK on iTunes and YouTube. Don't forget to like, share and comment. I'm your host today, Frankie B, and I'm joined by a sick panel today. First, I'd like to welcome from the capital city of France, Paris, Pascal. How are ya? Bah, oh, Francky B, tout va bien, tout va bien. Mate, how I, are you? Mate, I'm good. I was listen, <laughs> listening to some old Dipset, some old Joel Santana before the podcast, getting ready. Oh yes, I, I recall the diplomat, Jim Jones, Cameron, you know, very good music, yes. Yeah. Hey, very good. Yeah. Jim Jones. Jewels, brilliant. Of course, of course, of course. Were brilliant. you wearing pink, like Cameron? Or? No, no, I don't do pink, mate. It's just solid navy blue, mate. All right, okay, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but not Chelsea blue, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pass, do you do you want to start, shout your social media? Of course, my social media is Pascal underscore the sad, uh, you know, on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, you know, for KB, you know, the show has really helped me, you know, now in the streets of Paris, I get numbers, I get all sorts of uh, DM requests. So thank you very much for having me on the show, you know, very pleased. Thank you. Wicked. There is some blue representation this week from the YouTube channel 100% Chelsea. Can we welcome the return of Louis Beneventi? Hello, Frankie. How are you? I'm all good, mate. What's going on? How's, yeah, how's Blue what? Life? Blue, blue Life? It's, it's good, pretty decent. You know, just looking down. I had a nice view from up here, but uh, don't know. Let's see how long it lasts. Uh, you know, it's a pretty decent little view. Yeah, because last time I saw you was at the Emirates when Arsenal beat Chelsea 3-0. And months on, <laughs> look at the change in fortunes, mate. I mean, I, I I remember seeing you. I don't, don't remember being at the Emirates. I'm not not, <laughs> not not sure what that was. You know, I I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been obviously it's been a huge change. That was, you lot clearly uh, gave us a hand there, and uh, it's uh, definitely changed our fortunes around. Thirteen yeah. on the bounce until the uh, Spurs, and uh, you know, it's it's we're still looking pretty sharp. It's gonna be interesting to see what how it goes on from here. Yeah, I think I think Abramovich has got to cut us a check because we got you to change your formation, mate. Uh, nah, you're right. You've got Gazidis for that. <laughs> and Cronky. And Cronky. Deep pockets, deep pockets. Yeah. So, Louis, you want to shout out your social media? Yeah, so uh, on Twitter, I'm at Louis the Boogalo, um, and on for um, 100% Chelsea on all other social media channels as well. Um, but also, uh, if Frank doesn't mind me asking, I've also uh, got a podcast, uh, yes. which... You can listen to as well. You had a little, little listen, Frankie? Yeah. It's, um, what is it? Is it you and your uni, um, buddies? It is me and my uni buddies. It's the orange segment. So if you guys fancy having listened to just people talk a load of rubbish about football, then, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what we are. So it's, uh, at the orange segment on, like, on every social media platform. Yeah. And do you want to talk a bit about 100% Chelsea? Yeah. It's, um, as, as Frankie said, it's, it's a, it's a YouTube channel, um, it's completely geared towards, um, well, Chelsea fans, uh, getting Chelsea fans views about the games. Obviously, we have um, guests on as well. We have collaborations. We work with the Redmen TV, Arsenal fan TV for Chelsea and Liverpool, respectively. Um, you know, it's a great, it's a great little channel. And if uh, you guys fancy listening to the opinions of football fans and you know just all that sort of stuff to do with Chelsea, then um, come across and subscribe and like us on all our social media. Wicked noise. Finally, I'd like to welcome a man that is the former WBO Intercontinental Featherweight Champion, Ben Duracell Jones. How you doing, Geese? How you doing? Yeah, not too bad, Frankie. Good, very good. Thank you, mate. Very good, very good. Very chilled. 
<laughs> yeah, you sound sure. You sound like you've got a cigar on, mate. Uh, let's see, I can't. That's one thing I can't do. But yeah, so um, I'm as chilled as I was having a cigar on. <laughs> so, so how's training going? Brutal, I bet. Yeah, it is, mate. And that's why this this gets to this time of night, and it's uh, very tiring. But yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I started at eight years old, so that's, wow. that must mean I love the sport. Wow. What I mean to ask you is, how did you get the name Duracell? Did the missus give you that name? <laughs> Which she did, <laughs> mate. <laughs> she don't let me near her. <laughs> my, my missus calls me low battery, mate. Uh, yeah, that's a problem with my missus would call me as well. <laughs> no, my, my name Duracell was just because I'm very hyperactive. Um, not tonight, but I am normally very hyperactive. Um, and in my boxing, I'm, uh, I'm a very fit individual, so, um, in, so people have come up with the name Duracell, so I, I, I keep on going. So that's, that's what it is. My mum pulled, pulled it out first, I think. She was the one who said he's, a, he's like a Duracell bunny, he just keeps on going. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder what you, I wonder what you're like with a bit of Red Bull in your system, mate. Oh, I'm a nightmare, honestly. My <laughs> friends, I used to, obviously, before I was professional, go out drinking and uh, having the nights out. I was no, not allowed anywhere near Red Bull. That was banned substance for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good on it. <laughs> I'm a hyperactive lunatic. I can run up walls. So, so Ben, do you want to tell us what you've got lined up for 2017, fight-wise? At the moment, I've got planned for the 4th of March in the Grand Connaught Rooms in, in London. That's in Holborn, London. So nice. And it's, a, okay. it's a nice big posh do. Um, I'm fighting for the WBC uh, WBC International, which Josh Warrington used to hold and um, now vacated him. And I'm going for the bout. I don't know opponents as yet, but will shortly be uh, announced. Brilliant. It sounds um, like there's a lot going on for 2017. So, Ben, do you want to shout out your social media? Yes, yes, yes. So I'm on um, I'm on Twitter at, at Ben Jones Boxer. Um, if you Googled uh, Ben Jerusel Jones, you come up with that. My Facebook and uh, probably Instagram, that sort of thing. I have um, a uh, management team, Assassin Promotions, that uh, deal with all that for me. Um, so yeah, um, look me up and uh, find out what's going on. Big up the Jerusel. <laughs> right now it's time for some real talk on pep talk let's go so we're going to start with the boxing breaking today is the possible showdown in 2017 between manny pacquiao and kel brook gentlemen right. eddie hearn has allegedly had talks with top rank ben is now the perfect time for kel brook to take on pacquiao I think so, definitely, yeah. I, I actually haven't even heard of that, so that was the first I've heard of it. So, Breaking yes, today. That's a, that is a definite fight I'd like to see. I would personally like to get Kelbrook out very quickly for a nice, nice, pushy sort of win back to Kelbrook's normal style, just to get him that full confidence and everything all back into, into and also back to the weights as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great fight, yeah, and that's something I do want to see. How do you think Kell Brook performed in the Triple G fight? Um, difficult for me to say. Um, Kell Brook's a fantastic fighter. He is, yeah. But GGG is, is a phenomenal fighter, and he's given away a couple of weights here. And, and we all know as boxers, it doesn't seem like a lot um, in actual weight, but I tell you what, a pound in boxing is a lot. And I felt like it was at any point that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I was watching it thinking, do you know what, you're a great fighter, Kel. And I'm glad, I hope you earn a hell of a lot of money because he didn't need to jump that far. He's, he's a talented fighter himself, but at his own level, at his own, not his own level, at his own weight. That's that's the main thing to say. Um, he's, a, uh, he's shown that he's, he's class at his own weight and he's got a fantastic weight there with loads of big fights. I think just the opportunity came and he went for it. And I don't think that that, um, that tarnishes his career in any way. I think um, that's he'd come back down and show what he's, show what he's made of. Yeah. Hopefully against Manny Pacquiao, who knows? Yeah, I just want to see him back in the ring. I want to hear him say, I'm back, baby. 
That's what I want. Yeah, mean. too right. That's it. Same <laughs> here. Same here. Um, Pascal. Oh, so, wait. in terms of Pacquiao possibly fighting Kel Brook, is that something you think will happen? And if so, who do you think will be the favourite? Well, you know, it'd be a very interesting prospect. You know, we're well, not sure that many Pacquiao has fought in Europe before. You know, he normally fights in Asia or in America. So it'd be very good to have, you know, a great future uh, Hall of Fame like Pacquiao to come to Europe. And if Eddie Arm can do anything in London Stadium, you know, in Wembley Stadium would be absolutely fantastic. But, uh, you know, look, it's a very tough call, you know. It's a very tough call. I would still marginally give it to Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, certainly because, you know, Pacquiao is, is a very, very talented fighter. He's still, he's only 36 years of age, you know, he's still not rusty, you know, and he's shown that um, he can still mix it with the best of them, you know, and um, I think that uh, Kel Brook will be, uh, you know, in again for a very difficult difficult time, but at the same time, Kel Brook at the welterweight division is also a very proven fighter. He's still a champion, you know, at IBF. He's a big welterweight as well. He's a very big welterweight and he's a man that can punch. And he's, a very, he's got exceptional timing. Um, so there could be an opportunity for Kel to cause an upset, you know, but I think the bookings and, you know, and, and uh, the, the boxing pundit will lead towards many Pacquiao because of his resume, because of the type mm-hmm. of fight that the Pacquiao has. The experience, of course, you know, but you can never have Kel, Kel, Brook, uh, Kel, Kel Brook out, you know, he's, uh, I really like Kel Brook, he's a very good fighter, very talented fighter, he's got the, the heart of a, of a lion, and if this is going to be an upset, I reckon that uh, Kel Brook is the kind of guy that can uh, inflict it, you know. The special one, Kel Brook, big up, we want to see the fight. Now it's official, <laughs> as broken to you by Pep Talk UK. Fred Aquando is fighting Shannon the Cannon Briggs for the WBA title. Let's go, champ. Pascal, we bumped into Wait. Fred at the Joshua fight and he confirmed yeah. it himself. It's actually going ahead. Yes, I remember. It was a very good night, wasn't it? The Joshua and Molina f- uh, night. You know, we saw him on the way to the hotel, you know. Um, he was it on the way to see Scott Quick. We saw Scott Quick there. That's right, yeah. Know? So, yes, he was a very, very, you know, it was a great opportunity to beat Fraser Quendo. Very nice guy, you know, good gentleman, you know, um, you know, I understand also anthropologist, loves people, does a lot of char- charitable work in his he's spare time. That, so, he's got know. that Puerto Rican passion as well. Puerto Rico. No, of course. Oh. Yeah, of, of course, I'm sure <laughs> he's got very good salsa moves, you know. Uh, but it will be interesting <laughs> to see if those moves can go into the ring. You know, and, uh, you know, and Fraser Quento, you know, against uh, Shannon the Cannon Briggs. You know, we've been waiting to see Shannon the Cannon Briggs fight, you know, for quite some time. It would be great if that fight could take place in the UK because I understand that Shannon in England has a very, very good big following. You know, people like him, you know, people take care. Uh, take people to him like to say, of, let's go, champ. Of course, you know, he's got a very infectious personality. You know, in boxing, you need that. You know, you need to bring the galvanized people with you, you know, and, and he's embraced the British culture and the people of Britain, uh, you know, love Shannon the Cannon Briggs. And uh, it also be very good to see whether Shannon can become a third time world champion. You know, he's won the, you know, he's won the title twice before and uh, it'll be very good to see him again. But, you know, the, it's, uh, do not believe that the fight could be, you know, a pay per view fight because not many people, you know, know who Fred Quendo is, you know, and they don't, don't particularly, you know, know his background very well so it will be good very good terrestrial tv fight but um, i'm also concerned whether could you can you make this fight a main event you know because you know i mean uh, what kind of marketing would you be pulling you know, i mean shannon, shannon, the cannon shannon, shannon can market that's all right he could market mate <laughs> well of course you know i mean he's a he's a he's a, he's a nuclear uh, bomb of a, of a marketer but uh, at the same time you know the, the opponent is also very important to bring in the, the buzz that uh, mm-hmm. that that and, and of course let's face it the paycheck that shannon is looking for you know he's not doing this for for nothing you know he wants to get uh, you know secure his pension <laughs> He's still got a few miles in the clock, mate. He's still got yeah. a few miles. He's still the champ. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ben, um, in terms of Shannon yeah. Briggs, he's finally got his chance. So, after all those press presser walk-ins, funny videos and saying, let's go, champ. How do you think he's going to do? Uh, he could do it. I mean, he's obviously, he's, um, he's getting older now and... Who knows? I mean, this is this is his opportunity, and this is what he wanted, and this, this he's done a great job of it. I mean, um, how many people have said to me to do different stunts and stuff, and I never 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 even thought about it to be honest. <laughs> but uh, 
He has, and he, he's travelled the world, and especially in heavyweight division. And, and he chased Klitschko There's, for a long time around the world as well. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, and he's and, he, and he's, he's he's done himself proud. Even if you looked at um, if he didn't have this fight, he's made himself money on back of this, you know, already, which is great. And I wish him all the best. And to be honest, my total opinion on heavyweights is you do have the the top top grade. And then there's a step below that are quite a lot below in my eyes. Mm-hmm. And I think anyone can win it. It's a, it's a puncher's chance in that heavyweight game. And course, I really yeah. think that, uh, yeah, he could do well. I really do think so. Good luck to him. Good luck to him. He's done, he's done himself proud already. Yeah. Ben, I just want to hear you say it. You, you know what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Let's go, champ. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. <laughs> <laughs> right now, a quick word on the unif- massive unification fight between James Chunky DeGale and Badu Jack. Champion versus champion. It's going down this weekend. Ben, how do you feel yeah. this one is going? It's a great matchup. I mean, the unification just looked at records. It's very, very, very 50 50 on mm-hmm. records. It's very 50 50 in every way. They're both holding a world, world title. It's a great opportunity for both of them. Yeah. I think the gal can do this. I yeah. really do. And Badu, really ja- do. Badu Jack's been stopped before. A lot of people yes. don't know that. Um, he's been stopped. James the girl's lost only on points before. Stop. Yeah, and I believe that he's improved in a big, big way big since way. that loss. Mm-hmm. In a big way, more than more than more than most, to be honest, of that have lost and come back. He's he's changed, and I think that it took him a while. I think a good a good year or so from that loss, and then he started to come into it, and then obviously winning the title, and he's he's progressed and progressed. He's a great fighter. He was always a great fighter, but I, it, there's a difference between um, being a world champion and coming your way up. And I think he's learned a hell of a lot on that way on that journey. So you expect it, to see uh, a, a new WBC and IBF champion? On Sunday oh, I so. morning, I hope so. Yeah, I'd hope to think so. You know, it's, I mean, it's nice. So I went through the ABAs and, and amateur days with with uh, with James. So mm-hmm. um, it, it'd be fantastic to see him go and um, go and do the business. Yeah, it'd be good. It'd be really good. Yeah. What's that feeling like to actually achieve what you set out to do from you know from starting in the sport? Oh, I mean, it's, it's a matter. I mean, I've actually, I've never won the world title. I've won the Intercontinental, which is, it's, it's pretty, pretty much my world title. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to win a world title in my time. And mm-hmm. I think every stage that you get, even, you know, fighting for the English, winning the English, them sort of, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling. It's everything that you've been working for and everything you've been putting your life and changing your life to, especially for the 12 weeks before, you put your life through hell to get there. And I think um, I think uh, at any stage, it doesn't matter whether it's your southern area, your mm-hmm. international masters, yeah. it's, it's it's your it's your goal. And winning that title is everything you've just just worked so hard for. You know, it's brilliant. It's a great feeling. Don't get me wrong. When you're winning world titles, you're getting that, and you're getting probably a nice paycheck as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's yeah. a little bit different in some ways. I hear the feeling's better than having sex. Is that true? Oh, easily. <laughs> <laughs> Only the challenge. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> so, Pascal, um, wait. You've had time to think about it. It's been a whole week. Have you changed your mind? Are you still rooting for Badu Jack? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, the only reason why I'm going for Bagu Jack is because he's go he's good to be fighting in in his home, you know, is the, the the advantage is the home advantage for him, you know. Uh, James again has to travel, but you know, James has done it before. He's very good at fighting abroad. He's a road warrior, of course. But uh, you know, it's it's a very it's a very interesting fight. But at the very same time, you know, it's a it could be a very difficult fight. I think James will have to perform extremely well because. It's just it's the judges that I'm concerned about. You know, uh, if you recall, I've got uh, 
you know, split decision going to go in, uh, you know, 2-1 against uh, James DeGale because of, you know, the way that we've seen the way that boxing can be judged sometimes, you know. So, and um, sometimes some judges favor the, the own boxer. And if the fight, you know, as as, as Ben said, is, is evenly matched, you know, and uh, if the judges cannot see much of a difference between the two fighters, it is probable that, uh, you know, we can we can have a, 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 a winner in Badu Jack. But, you know, Badu Jack has lost before. Yeah. Uh, and he James was badly, he was badly rocked in that fight as well. He, but you know, but to give him credit, Badu Jack was never really the exciting fighter that, uh, <laughs> that, that 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 we all thought he would be. You know, but he's gradually started to work really, really hard. You know, and uh, it is proven that he's able to mix it with the best of them. You know, so I give him credit because he's he certainly has worked really hard at, at his boxing ability. But what will be interesting to see is he's not he's no longer with. Um, his trainer Mustafa Mohamed, you know, the old trainer, they, they've parted ways for that particular fight, and it will be interesting to see whether uh, the absence of any Mustafa will have, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 any, uh, you know, um, effect on the fight, you know, come Saturday, come Saturday evening in Las Vegas, so uh, sorry, in New York, pardon, pardon me, in New York. So I'm very, very keen to see the fight, but you know, I'll be watching it here in Paris. You know, I'll be watching early hours with uh, my coffee and uh, my flip flops. You know, and I'll be very, very, and I'll be rooting for both fighters because, to be honest with you, Frankie B, I like them both. I'm, I think they're very talented young men. Yeah, they're very yeah. young men. They carry themselves really well. You know, James DeGale is exceptional banter. You know, as they say in England, banter. You know, he's very, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a you know, he's a cheeky chappy. You know, as they say, and I, ve- I would very much like him to succeed. And Badu Jack, of course, represents himself very well. You know, uh, sweet, he's also he's one of the very few boxers of Sweden that have won world title. And, uh, you know, and that itself is a very big achievement. So, you know, it's, it's a very difficult call, but I'm just, we, I'm just leaning towards the Badu Jack because of the home advantage. But, you know, in my heart of art, if James again wins it, you know, I'll be very pleased for James because he'll be probably a very, very good, um, you know, uh, for British boxing, but also for his, uh, you know, individually for a boxer to win a gold medal and to become, you know, a multiple world champion. You know, a world champion at different, uh, you know, boxing bodies, WBC and ABF is a very, very big achievement for mm-hmm. a young boy, a young boy from, uh, from where, where is he from again, Frankie B? What's the North, area? North Weezy, my hometown, Holston. Uh, so, of course, of course, there you go, you know, that, uh, that ghetto place in London, yes, very good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, the streets of Paris are quite ghetto as well, mate. Oh, of course, mate. You know we've <laughs> we've, we've been uh, we've been misbehaving for a very long time. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, hopefully it's going to be a good fight, and hopefully it's going to be lit. Now, 2017 has seen a kind of a different announcement, promoted by Mayweather Promotions. It's going to be wait, wait for a minute. Soldier Boy versus Chris Brown. It's going to be R&B versus hip hop. Ben, yes. the tail of the tape. Nobody knows the tail of the tape, but who are you rooting for? Oh, <laughs> boy. Do you know what? I find it quite funny. I'm not, I, I can't root for any of them, to be honest. I'm not 100% sure. Good luck to them. Anyone that steps through that rope, I'm, I'm completely on their side. You've got to be a brave man to step through that rope. So good luck to them. Um, what are they doing it for? Are they doing it for their for their self, or are they doing it for charity? Publicity, yes, yeah. it's, it's for um, publicity, I think, and um, I think there are I some charities. I think you're to charity because there's a there's um, a good pay per view to be a hell of a lot of people um, watching and stuff. Oh, there's a lot of charity involved, and uh, they've got enough money; they don't need no more. <laughs> ben, I hear you're a big Soldier Boy fan. Oh, I like Soldier Boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like Soldier Boy. That's, to be honest, I, I'm I'm an open band with music. I like a bit of I like a bit of everything. To be honest, I'm very. Um, you can really pin me down to one type of music. Mm-hmm. I like sort of old school garage. I like a bit of everything. Depends what I'm doing. If I'm chilling out, I would like something very smooth, very Jack Johnson, something like that. <laughs> yeah, a bit, Just, a bit, a bit uh, Sinatra. Yeah, why not? I don't mind. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm, I am. A very open open book with, with music. You get some of my friends and they're just one way or the other, R and B or you know, something very or, or, or very hard music. 
And then um, I'm just very open with all different types of music. <laughs> it's nice. So who you got winning in it's this? An easy in way this to who you got winning in this uh, fight between Brown and uh, Soldier Boy, Chris Brown? God, blimey! I would really, <laughs> I'd love to see a bit of their training. I'll tell you straight away, but I really don't know. I can couldn't help you. I mean, both of them have got some fantastic people training them. Well, supposedly, anyway. Um, you've got Mike Tyson and you've got Floyd Mayweather, have you not? So you couldn't get two opposites as well. Mike Tyson is mm-hmm. pure aggressive and come forward and, and attacking, and then you've got uh, Floyd Mayweather, who's defense slick. master. Yeah. Slick, yeah. yeah so if, if they're going to come out and, um, and be like their trainers... Cool, what an exciting fight, but I can't, I can't see it. I think it'll be windmilling the pair of them, to be honest. But I think, I think this one's going to points, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too right, too right. So, Pascal, what is it for you? Wait. Is it R&B or is it hip-hop this time? Is it Soldier Boy uh, or is it Chris Breezy Brown? Well, you know, for Kibir, you know, interestingly, I've been, you know, looking at some correspondence during, you know, regarding this, these two young men fighting each other. And, um, Adrian Brunner, uh, is very good friends with Chris Brown and with Soldier Boy. And Adrian Brunner has said that Chris Brown can fight, you know. Uh, Chris Brown has okay. been, you know, in the boxing ring. You know, Rihanna spy. says that as well. And Rihanna, I mean, Rihanna is a very <laughs> prime example, very prime example that, uh, Chris Brown can, can deliver, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, so, so totally a black eye, you know. So we, we know he has a very good left hook and a very good uh, right hand, you know. As um, as Ryan has said, you know, you know, in the police report. And um, and uh, let's be honest, Soldier Boy, you know, very looks a bit like a skinny version of Rihanna. Um, I think it would be very <laughs> easy for Chris Brown to, um, you know, to take him out. Uh, you know, at first I thought he could potentially be, a, you know, a split decision, but you know, looking at the tactism of Chris Brown. You know, and the fact that uh, Soldier Boy is a known, known, uh, you know, addict of the uh, the old uh, Pablo Escobar. You know, <laughs> I think I think uh, I think he's, he's bound, you know, with this one from Kibi. You know, by by no count, I actually think that uh, that Soldier Boy will knock himself out before the fight. You know, <laughs> he might do a Tyson Fury and, and uppercut himself. Uh, of course, yeah, I can see that happening. <laughs> But look, for the sport of boxing, it's very good because, you know, as, you, as I said to you before, it's a, it's, a, it's a good sport. You know, this sport has been going on since the man first first was created. You know, uh, boxing is, is something that we, each and every human, be- certainly every man, you know, has inside of them. It's just a lens to learn how, how to do it. But I just hope that they don't, um, you know, bring the sport to distribute. And, um, and as Ben said, you know, it would be very good if that money could be given to a charity, you know, to help children or, or you know, people or young, or young, young children with disabilities or education. Because these two young men are already millionaires. They've got lots of money. They don't need more, more money. And um, a lot of people who don't like boxing will be tuning in just because of the those two individuals. So it will be good to see that uh, fight going to a good cause because boxing can change the world, you know, as Mohamed Ali uh, you know, showed, showed before. Well, I've got Chris Brown winning by TKO, but he's going to have to <laughs> work, 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 work. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, guys, now it's interview time. Our boxing correspondent, Shaz, found out from Conor Ben what he has planned for 2017. Step Talk UK are joined by someone who's looking to have a fantastic bang of a 2017. Do you know what? I'm not even going to give you an intro. I'll let you introduce yourself. Here you go, bro. So my name is Connor Nigel Gregory Ben, aka The Destroyer. 2017 is my year. I'm coming to take it all when you know 2016 was a good year, uh, but 2017 is my year. You had some cracking fights all over the country last year. What can we expect this year? What have you got lined up? What have I got lined up? You know, hopefully, you know, there's big bills on. You've got the Crowler Leonares, you've got the David Hay, you've got the Joshua Bill. You know, so it'd be a great way to start the year if I could get on the Hay Bellew Bill. I mean, that'd be explosive. And, you know, followed by the Wembley. Who knows? That would be a surreal feeling. You know, what a great way to, what a great way to start the year. Last April, wasn't it? Your debut. 
Um, yeah, last April and a lot's changed since then in, you know, myself, the way I am. Um, you know, I'm still a humble kid. I just know what I want and, you know, I've, I've got a taste for higher life and, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to get back to the drawing board this year and um, really, really show what I'm made of. You've surrounded yourself with just a few people. You've kept your circle very small. Um, who's in your circle? What do they do for you on a day-to-day -day basis? And how do you roll? You know, I've got, how do I roll? I roll up in our race. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. But um, I've got two, ma two main boys, three main boys, Colleen, Matt and Justin. And it's stayed like that since, since I had my debut. And, you know, it's not changing. I could have many friends, many friends who are going to distract me, you know, birds who are going to invite me here and parties. But I know them three boys I've got around me give me their harsh opinion when I need it. You know, they keep my feet on the ground. You know what? Their, their opinion is the only pin that matters to me. you got people say, oh, I think I'm all that in a bag of chips. Oh, Connor's changing. Connor's this. I didn't have the opportunities I have now back then. And you know what? I'm, I'm not... I don't, I don't deny, like, flashy things. I, I don't deny that. I like spending money on jackets, cars, watches. You know, um, it, it's just the way I am. And, if you, um, you know, if people don't like it, well, that's, that's your choice. But I know people who know me know I'm humble. And you know what? I'm still that same kid. If, a, if someone wants a picture, I've got all the time in the day for them. I won't be here without him. You've only had a handful of fights. How far are you away from title shots? I don't know. I'm, I've surpassed um, what I wanted to in a year. You know, I'm I'm doing I'm doing things I didn't know I could do before. I'm fighting the way I didn't know I could fight before. I mean, look at my debut compared to my last fight. Or my six rounder. You know, it's all it's all just learning. Each fight's been different. You know, you got people calling me out. No, when I'm ready, I will fight you and I will beat you when I'm ready. On the Joshua undercard, you scored your first knockout. You put the young fellow away. I saw you put him down, then side, I don't know, almost done a moonwalk back to your corner, then come back in and you were in a bit of a bit of a hurry to put him away. Is Does it make you feel better putting him down? Is that what you were targeting? Is that something you wanted to get under your belt? No, sometimes I wish it was just knockout flush, you ain't getting up for a good 10 seconds. But, um, you know, as soon as he gets back up, I just want to finish him off, get it done with. You know, you don't get paid for overtime. But... Um, no, sometimes I think, like, then after the fight, I think, you know what, I should just sit down, I should take my time, because if I pick my shots, he'd be gone flush, whereas I'm rushing my shots, and it's, you know, it can get a bit messy, but you know, I'm just, I'm just learning, man. i got a knockout, that's all that matters, at a minute. I see you doing a lot of work in the gym, you're doing a lot of... Is it strength and conditioning with Matthew? Is, it, is that what you do with Matt? What, what do you do with him? I've got strength. He's, he's, he's not my trainer. He's my training partner. We do um, strength work. Um, that's it. We have a good laugh. We do my strength work. Can I enjoy doing weights? And then my explosive training I do with Kai. Um, at absolute. Um, that's, that's really needed. But, you know, there's a, there's a balance. The reason I couldn't fight on the Wembley show on the horror balls because I got shingles and I was ill. Um, and that was because I was training three times a day. Like, a lunatic and you know it catches up with you so um, you know this time I'm going to start pacing myself doing things a bit different and really go on how my body feels instead of thinking I have to train at world championship level I just take my time enjoy it I was burnt out I thought I thought why, why can't I get up to go do sprints in the morning why can't I get up to go do this I thought oh, is my ambition gone for boxing what's going on and it was just because I was overdoing it three times a day and when I train I, I train and you know I just need to do a lot of things different this camp I see you do a lot of running work with the likes of Hara Cheeseman and the Matchman boys I know what stays on the road what happens on the road stays on the road where do you come amongst all of these boys who's the quickest and who's the slow coach um Spider reckons he's the fastest by the way I I'll probably be a Spider <laughs> um I reckon I'd I think I, on the sprints, I'm second. I'm second, yeah. On the sprints, on the triangle, Martin Ward's an absolute gun. Martin Ward kills it. On the sprints, Ted kills it. I come second. Um, on the stairs, Leon C. Steps, Ted's gun. Oh, Ted's a gun of them, mate. Like, he beats me by like five seconds on every stair. I come about third, fourth. I'll tell you what, you just mentioning the sprints, the hills, the stairs. Do you know what? Six in the morning when it's freezing and I, mean, I can't feel my nuts that cold. Do you know what? 
I'm breaking the sweat just thinking about it. At that time of the morning, the only thing I can do is just about roll over in bed and turn over and face the other way. <laughs> I wish I could do that, mate. You know, I wish I was somewhere hot sunbathing, but you know, um, I feel like. I, feel like, I don't feel like Tone makes us do it in the uh, morning for our fitness. I think it's more for the hardness of it. You know, getting beat up on sparring on Monday and then Tuesday having to get up for sprints early in the morning. I think it's more for the hardness. Because it's still dark, it's still cold. You know, it gives you that extra bit of toughness. And you know, we do Leon C. Steps and Ted. Gashes, gashes, vomit, gashes. I've, I've, I've vomited before and you know, you still just keep going. We at Pep Talk UK are going to be keeping an eye on how you get on in 2017. We're going to be keeping an eye on the jackets, on the watches, on the cars, and eventually when you're a lot older, the birds, and you can enjoy all of it. Is that all right? Uh, that's all right, mate. Keep your eye out. <laughs> nice one. Thank you as always, Connor, and I hope you have a great 2017. Thank you. You too, mate. Now we hear from the promising Chris Two-Slick Congo, who has just been confirmed that he is on the Eubank Junior and Quinning card for February the 4th. Pep Talk UK are joined by a lad who's one of my favourites, who I would like for him to introduce himself. He's a starlet. Here we go. It's your boy Chris T-Slick Congo. Once again, one of the top world to weights in the division. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a far better intro that I would have done, and this is one man that is happy to shout about himself. Now, how many fights have you got under your belt already? Uh, two so far. I see some of your training videos. How's training going? What's your regime like at the moment? Who are you training with? Uh, my regime is brilliant at the moment. I'm training with uh, Ted Bami up in the McGill's gym, and uh, I'm up... Um, Twickenham, which is basically the St. Mary's University, doing some of my training up there with um, Ben Lonergon. So, uh, yeah, we're working on strength and power now, and, and everything really is all coming together. Every time I've seen you fight, I've seen an army of fans follow you. What's the secret? How comes you got, is it all mates or is it people following your career? How comes you bring this little army with you every time you come to fight? Well, social media is a big platform and the best way to get out there is through social media. So um, what, I, what I do, I have a team called Whole Nine Management and we're literally out, out there just trying to plug anything we can. And um, I think through social media, obviously word of mouth is the best form of promotion you can get. So even word of mouth, we just call people up and just try to get as many people out there. It helps when you bring music starlets out with you. Now, on your last fight, who did your ring walk? Who come out going, bolt, bolt, bolt? <laughs> it was Cadet, one of the UK's um, top stars in the music industry at the moment. So yeah, he's doing his thing. A good mate of mine. Now, you mentioned social media and it being powerful. If listeners want to follow you, how do they follow you? What, what are your Twitter and, and your Insta handles? Um, you can catch me on Twitter, Instagram and on Snapchat, which is at BoxerChrisF2D. And also catch me on Facebook, Chris Congo. So, yeah. One thing I have to say is you got the right nickname because you really are too slick. Thank you. Lovely. You take care, brother. Wicked. Now it's football time. So there was no massive FA Cup shocks last weekend. But the headline was Wayne Rooney is the joint highest goal scorer for Manchester United with Bobby Charlton. Louis, Yo. did you see the pics of, of Sir Bobby Charlton when Rooney equaled his record? Oh, my God. It was, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> It was that face of Mumple when she catches it. Um, <laughs> I'd like him to surpass the record. Then when he saw it coming, it was like, nah, no, I don't. Can, 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 can. <laughs> it was like shock horror. He's, he's actually he's actually done it. He's it's actually happened. leveled my record. But Wayne, Wayne Rooney, I feel, is hugely under underappreciated by um, Manchester he United. He is. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for what he's done, obviously, he's huge. How, how, however, with Wayne, Wayne Rooney as well as him being underappreciated there are better players as a centre midfielder or as a striker or as a number 10 because he was overused by Fergie but you know he, 
in those times where it was overused, she has created some amazing moments for Manchester United. And you know, when fans were shooting him down at the beginning of the season and last season, I found it quite uh, disturbing. It was. It was kind way. of like they were basically laying blame to to Rooney alone, which mm. I thought was disgusting. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. He's uh, been a great uh, England player. He, he, he has been. He has been. Um, oh, obviously, you know, he was the captain. He, you, as soon as you become a captain of a club, you're going to have a huge burden on your shoulders. And, you know, um, he, for, for what he, like I was saying, for what he has done, you can understand why the black and you can understand why a man who's won so many trophies for that club is being uh, held to ransom by the fans because he, he's not following through on what he should be doing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's definitely something... Uh, which I can see why they're angry but at the same time I don't understand why I would be because the man like you said is equal to record which is absolutely amazing yeah. and should be as a legend at that club what, what about your most memorable Wayne Rooney goal for Manchester United because there's one that sticks in my head oh yeah same it's the one against Man City Scorpion kick or the, the brilliant kick. yeah the acrobatic volley that was yeah. that was sick that was amazing he tried to show what he can do and he's, he's you know it's, if it sticks to the mem- memory of all football fans then it's clearly something which he's, you know, he's done which makes people think you know wow what a player I mean that volley was second to Giroud Scorpion kick recently for yeah, me yeah, yeah I, I noticed that the Scorpion kick made a perfect four shape for uh, <laughs> <laughs> for Arsenal yeah yeah <laughs> Ben, how big of an achievement is it for Wayne Rooney to equal Sir Bobby Charlton's record? Uh, it's, I mean, it's amazing, amazing. Like you say, he's, he's, uh, he's had his ups and downs of our times and stuff, but a record like that, it just shows you um, that really down, these people have got to realise what a player he really, really is. And that's the reason why people get the ump with him. Because of he is such an amazing player. If he's not quite on form, they, all they do is they look at they look at that and think, I oh, bet he should be amazing every week. No one can be amazing every week. He's a great, great player. And, um, yeah, I've, I think he's got many years left. He's still a young man. I mean, he's, uh, what is he, 30? How old is Wayne Rooney? Yeah, 30. 30. 30 years old. Do you, do you think he's this. still good enough for England? I do. I, I personally, 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 as a boxer who has to con- control weight and problems and, and that sort of thing, <laughs> I think if he lost a couple of few pounds, mm-hmm. you know, to really concentrate more on that, I think he'd be, he'd turn to, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's one of the best players in the world, but he would be there week in, week out. And I think then you wouldn't have all these, these bothers with him. I think he's just that little bit of, um, athleticism, you know, that he's not quite, as he's getting a little bit older, he's sort of, um, not having at the moment. But I think that's a lot to do with, a little bit to do with, you know, just a little bit of weight and someone just to be on him with his diet and stuff, but it's a, a bit of that Yorkshire pudding. Thing. Yeah, that's it, yeah, stuff <laughs> there. <laughs> and a bit of extra gravy. The hard thing is, with that, they're getting paid week in, week out. It's different as well for a boxer. Mm-hmm. We don't get yeah, paid exactly. week in, we get yeah. paid when we fight. So we've got to, um, we've got to push, push, push until we get that payday. And the, the, with, with Wayne Rooney, he's getting paid week in, week out, and you think, do you know what? I'll have an extra Yorkshire pudding, as you say, you know, and you, and you would. And don't, don't get me wrong, it loses that little bit. And I, I personally would like to see someone to say, do you know what, Wayne? I'd like to sh- just try a six, go six, eight weeks with me, doing a proper diet. Getting in, doing a, di- a different training, maybe get back into his boxing because he was his king boxer himself, and do a little bit of that and see how he improves with his football. I bet his football would come straight back to being as amazing as he always was. And don't get me wrong, he still is amazing, but not always week in, week out, and that's what people are moaning about. I think yeah. also with his age, his legs have gone a little bit as well because mm-hmm. he had been week in, week out since he was 16. But also, in, in, in terms of you know, like like Ben saying, if he did have that athleticism, I agree. I think he could be playing week in, week out. Maybe not as a striker like he used to, but maybe as a number ten or something like that. But um, he, I think it, it's a lot of it is down to the fact that he has been playing week in, week out. And also, it's a case well, of from the, sixteen. From sixteen, exactly. Oh, but the, other thing, young man. Yeah, the other thing to look at as well is obviously, even if he's playing as a number ten or a central midfielder, it, it's not. His, it wouldn't be his first choice position. And he, no. you look at it, there were, there are players where you go, well, on paper, that's actually their position. 
and they probably mm-hmm. be better, which is maybe another reason why he might not be playing as much. Um, but it, it, it all depends on if he loses, if he did lose that way, what, what would happen? But um, he's still would have done an amazing things, and he is an amazing legend for Manchester United. Yeah, amazing. So, so what, what are you guys recommending? Atkins or Help Life? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen me, Frankie. I'm the wrong person to ask that. <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen me since Christmas, mate. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Pascal, uh, uh, there's a lot of debate. Is, in your eyes, Rooney world-class? I mean, France are blessed with a number of world-class players. Griezmann, Pogba, many world-class players. What about Rooney? Do you, in France, recognise Rooney as being world class? Well, I mean, look, Frankie, there's a very interesting debate about what is world class. What do you consider world class? Mm-hmm. You know, in my, in my opinion, a world class player is able to bring his team, uh, you know, into stardom, into into bringing some yeah. trophies for the club or Maradona, for the country. Maradona, Napoli. Uh, ab- absolutely, absolutely. Maradona is probably a superstar of football. Probably one of the best footballers that's ever played, you know. Uh, of course, he's up to debate, but uh, Maradona is an exceptional football player because, uh, as you said yourself, the Napoli story is an unbelievable story, and I said this story to young to young children, you know, to the young kids in my neighborhood who still know Maradona even before they were, you know, they come out of the mother's belly. They know Maradona because you know legends live on and carry on. But you see, the the, the problem with when Rooney is, whilst he's been very good at Manchester United. For England, also he's, um, I believe he also holds a very good scoring record for, 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 for the national team. Mm-hmm. But what does he's he mean record. for the, mm-hmm. he's got, he's got the record, but what does he mean for the club and for the country? Because what we want is we want to see our country win trophies inter- internationally. Now Ronaldo, for instance, will be remembered as a world class player because he's won the Champions League at Manchester United, at Real Madrid, but also the Euros with Portugal. And, you know, and Ronaldo was desperate for a world, world you know, or international football accolade, you know. So for him, you know, the, the winning the Euros is better than even if Portugal never win the, the World Cup, at the very least, he's won international trophy. You know, we've yet to see Lionel Messi win a Copa de America or even a World Cup. Does it mean that Messi is not world class? Well, I would say, but, well, Messi is a world class player, of course. He's definitely world class. He's, he's, <laughs> world, he's, he's world class, but he's not yeah. achieved world class status with his, with his country. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a, it's a very interesting one. So I think it's a, and what, I, what I'm trying to say here for KB is a bit of a subjective answer because some some people will say yes Rooney is world class player other play, other other people will say well we don't think he's world class but if you see the records that he's breaking you know mm-hmm. both at both club yeah. level and, and uh, on country level you know you have to be a world class player to achieve those numbers you cannot be you know a cash potato even if Rooney is carrying a bit more pounds you know he, he, it's, it's certainly something that we need to consider and I think we need to grant him the, the you know the status of of, of of a world class player because he can have an impact in every team he goes to and he's done that you know he's shown that for England he's shown that for Manchester United so I would say he's world class but um I agree with, with Ben, you know, and I agree with Louis that he's carrying a few pounds, you know, whilst the value of the British <laughs> sterling is going down, you know, Rooney's value is going up, you know, and um, he certainly needs to lose a bit of weight. But I think Rooney is a comfortable, he's very comfortable, you know, he's won trophies, you know, he's, he's he still knows that his name will help him carry him into the, the, the England team. He'll still play at the World Cup, I believe, you know, his last World Cup. You know, what is the incentive for a man like Wayne Rooney? You know, you earn £300,000 a week. You know, you played for the, one of the best clubs in the world. I mean, what else can can Wayne Rooney do? You know, where is the motivation? Where does it come from? <laughs> Louis, how, how do you how do we define world class these days? Because, like Pascal saying, it is pretty subjective now. Um, some people go by stats. Some people go by personal preference and uh, analysis of how they play. I mean, what do you define as world class? I completely agree with Pascal. I think you have to win a trophy with your national team. That's that's what makes mm. me you're that class above everybody else. Uh, that's why I, I personally think Ronaldo and Messi. Man, and also because for me it, it does come down to personal preference as well. So with Ronaldo, if regards to use the example Ronaldo versus Messi again, I prefer Ronaldo because he's worked for it, and he I feel with Messi a lot of it was natural talent. Whereas Ronaldo, he's built up, he's trained day in day out, 
and he's manufactured. He, yeah. He's that goal. Yeah, he's only well, yeah, manufactured, but he sort of <laughs> he achieved he achieved that goal by working hard. Um, and it's, I, I do think it, it does come down to if you haven't won a World Cup or an, uh, a trophy with your national team. I, you're 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 world class, but you'll always be known as that person who nearly got there but just didn't quite make it. Well, Ben, do you think Ronaldo's um, um, a mark or graft by just the you know just a picture of his six pack? <laughs> as as uh, as I've said, he's worked so hard for what he does, and the thing is with Ronaldo is he's week in week out. Week in, week out, mm. he's, he's a great, great player. He's on it, and yeah. He, yeah, and he, he, you, you very rarely, even Ronaldo, when you, if you actually spoke to him and said, I'm not that I ever have, but when he's had a, t- a game that he thinks is terrible, we'd still think, wow, you know, things he, little things he does is just amazing. If you really look at, he's, he's worked so hard at it. He's, um, the little bit that in some ways that maybe, the fix us with Rooney as well. He's a great, play, great player. It's not every week, and there's a difference. As in, the consistency's got to be there. And you look at your Messi's, you look at your Ronaldo's. I would say eight out of ten, they're fantastic. As in, you look at Rooney, maybe it's four out of ten. Then four, amazing. But the other six aren't good enough. And that's that's the problem we have, and that is the problem, we're, especially when we're playing yeah. with England. I mean, a lot of it with England, I think, as well, is we've got an amazing, amazing league, Premier League, but mm-hmm. there's not enough Premier uh, English players in the Premier League all playing for the same clubs. You look at Spanish clubs, all playing in the same club, and they're all fantastic, and they get to know each other. We don't have that, and it's a shame. But can you can you change that? Money doesn't. Money changes that. That's the problem. And that is, there's too much money in football when t- you're not going to one say, oh, I'll tell you what, we're not going to have all our foreigners, we're going to we're going to have all lot of English players just because we want to do well in England as as an English team. It, it, I, I think it's a difficult difficult question to to, to ask, you know. One of my, yeah. And, and going back to the world class, I don't, I I sort of half disagree with the um, having to win having to win a World Cup or a European yeah, yeah. Cup or whatever. I think if you're a fantastic player, the Mao Bailey team is, you know, and because, I, yeah. I, I, I totally see where they come from. Stats are stats, and mm-hmm. that's how it is. But I, the thing when is, I play football at a yeah. different level, I don't care whether we won or lost, as long as I played well. That's how I used to play, and that mm-hmm. made me not a team player. Don't get me wrong, and that's why probably why I'm a boxer, <laughs> not a footballer. But <laughs> I used to, I, we could lose two 0 and everyone would gut it, walk off, and I yeah. could be happy. And we could do the opposite way, win 2-0, they're all happy and I'm gutted. Because I didn't play well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I Ronaldo, feel like that. Yeah. yeah, there's your Ronaldo. You know, that's why he is the, what he is. He works it so hard. He he will always play well, whether his team's losing or, or not. He wants to play well. He wants to better himself. He sure does. Now we move on to the weekend ahead. The Premiership is back, baby. So, Louis, your blue team versus another blue team, Leicester. Yes. Leicester versus Chelsea. Yes, indeed. What is Juan and Louis? Tell me. It's a tough one to say. I mean, as I was saying to you before we came on the pod, um, I, I'm still I, I'm a pessimist at heart, and I always have been. Um, and I mean... When people were saying we were going to win the league, continuously winning, I was happy. I mean, you take that all season. Uh, but as soon as we, I could see, I could smell that we weren't going to get that equal, we call the record of the most wins on the bounce with Arsenal. I could smell it as soon as we saw the game with Spurs. Yeah. And I was there just like, that well, game was set up for a fall. Yeah. And I was there, and it, it, we've been set for a fall <laughs> with every big club that we've played this season. And it's, it's been a, it's, it's been tough, but I think with, with a five-point gap, it's going to be yes. tough for me to say we're definitely going to like it's, it's not something's not going to happen. But with Leicester, I just feel they're going to want to buy it back. And considering how they played in the FA Cup, we're getting their first away win, their first one of the entire season <laughs> against Everton. They're going to be bouncing, and you, 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 Ranieri is going to have them 
rare in Sky Sound. Of course, Look, yeah. You, you messed up against them here last time. You messed up against them when you went to Stamford Bridge. Let's get our own back. And I feel we might still be a little bit shaken at the back of that Spurs, Spurs game, despite beating Peterborough United, the, the outside mighty side. But, <laughs> the Titans. I, I can, I can, I'm still, I'm going to sit here and answer. Let's see what happens. Let's take each game as it comes. But it's, um, it's definitely something which I'm um, a bit, I'm a bit worried about going into. Yeah, so, so what's your prediction? Draw, defeat. I don't want to predict it. I, I can, I can see us winning it, but it'll be a, it'll be yeah. a I'm more likely to see a draw. Yeah, I'm predicting a draw also. Now, Spurs versus West Brom at home, Ben. Yes. <laughs> your team. That's it. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, surely, sure. surely this I'd is easy money. I'd rather talk about money. a Chelsea game. <laughs> <laughs> have that one. It's fine. Every time we <laughs> yours, we seem to win the league. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I think I think Chelsea will win the league. I really do. My friends and uh, my, I've got my missus sitting next to me, and she's a Chelsea fan as well. So I've got Chelsea around me, you know, but. Uh, on this Leicester one I think they could go in it the same attitude and the same worry as what um, what you've got you know that little bit of I don't know what's going to happen and if Leicester play like they did last year they could do it you know but realistically Chelsea are the best team and that's what should happen Chelsea should win going to Spurs sorry because you asked me about Spurs I hope Spurs can do it and what worries me with Spurs is consistency and complacency and as well yeah they do and that's their problem and, and it, it's I always find the Spurs is we're sort of the nearly team and I, I I think your team Frankie seems to always pip us at the end you know your Arsenal they always seem to it always seem to there we're there we're there and Arsenal always pip us we sort of we're the nearly team uh, but we got and, we are and, and you know what we team. sing Ben you know what we sing it's happening <laughs> again it's happening again. <laughs> yeah. I bet you do. I bet you do. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame, but we are. We, year in, year out, we're getting that little bit more together, and I think, I think we'll, we're there or thereabouts every time. But it's just need that something else. Prediction-wise, do you think the ex-Arsenal player Harry Kane is going to score a hat trick? Oh, hat trick! Oh. <laughs> You could do, mate. You don't know. Yeah, exactly. Ex-Guna like Harry Kane. That one. <laughs> Ex-Guna. <laughs> um, I don't know. I After a, a good win against Chelsea like that, we're going to lose this weekend because that's how we are. Wow. Wow. That's a bold statement. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, but that's how we are. We go mm. and do all the hard work and it's brilliant and get complacent and go and do something silly. And that's... I hope that doesn't happen and I really mean that but I do believe that is Tottenham for and for and that's how we sort of are and I hope that doesn't happen and I really really mean that as well but it does happen with us so it's likely to be a, a Tottenham defeat or win or I think we'll win I do really think we'll win but I think I'm hoping that the silliness doesn't happen and the complacency doesn't happen and we carry on as normal and bounce off of the win that's what should happen. We should bounce off that, fill a million dollars, and go and win with a with a hat trick from Harry Kane. The ex Guna, <laughs> really. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so it's a Pascal, away, oh, oh, my boy, my yeah. fellow Guna, away. Oui. It's Swansea versus Arsenal at the Liberty Stadium. Surely this is going to be light work for Arsenal. Surely. Come on! You know, I, I, I say that like, yeah, easy money, you know, easy money. You know, Swansea swan, swan, are in the team in the in the descendancy, in the decline. You know, and they've they've had very difficult uh, start to the season. You know, they've got rid of one manager, they brought in another manager, and they have, and uh, there's now got the the nine the third manager in in in, in the course of the season, and uh, you know this bears all the hallmarks of a team that is going to be relegated. You know. Mm-hmm. And I think that, and I think that Arsenal must take this opportunity to play a, a you know, a Swansea team that still need to acclimatize to a new manager, you know, and it's going to be very difficult for Swansea to find the rhythm and, and certainly to 
understand what the new manager wants them to do. You know, he takes he takes a few games you know, during the season for the manager and the team to click together. I mean, Jose Mourinho is beginning to show this at the moment when you know we have Manchester United now becoming a bit more stable and finding a, finding a, 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 a rhythm. But he's been with them since the start of the season. Now with this with with Swansea, it's going to become very difficult for them to impose themselves. But you know, Swansea have a tendency to give Arsenal a very difficult game. But I believe with the depth and uh, certainly the bold with results will spare Arsenal and the, the confident Ozil returns from a long, you know, um, from a long absence from the from a recent flu. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we expect Ozil to be full of form and to, and to spread those balls, you know. I heard uh, Ozil was out the last two games from, from a paper cut. Oh, part of my year, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, perhaps so, so, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I expect an Arsenal to, to bring the, the three points. But uh, it's particularly, you know, now that Arsenal is out of the top four, you know, uh, Wenger doesn't really like to be out of the top four. And uh, he will want to do his best to get back in. Well, four is the magic number. So it's an Arsenal victory. Arsenal victory, yeah. But I think an emphatic victory. I think three goals, you know, three goals, uh, three goals to one. Three goals, brilliant. Now, the massive game this weekend. It's Manchester United versus Liverpool. I need some quick predictions. Louis Benevente. I'm going... I'm going to Manchester United. Me too. And be cold off. Yeah. Um, Can we just not, just like, <laughs> just scrap the whole game and, you know... Yeah, really get both teams. It's, it's not like it's one of the biggest things in the Premier League. I mean, we we'll just need to see now, whatever. Um, I'm going to go. Is it Man United at home? Man United at home. Man United to win it. Ben, predictions? Yeah. I think Man United myself. Um, I think Mourinho's got hold of them now. Wow. But Drew yeah, Sel- I think Drew Sell's calling it. Yeah, Drew Sell's calling yeah. it. <laughs> Drew Sell. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're on their way up. <laughs> <laughs> all the way up, all the way up. Yeah. So Pas- Pascal, um, Man United Oi. against Liverpool. Predictions? Where, well, you, know, you know, being French, uh, being different from everyone else, I will go for Liverpool. And bec- simply because, you know, the first game, Mourinho played very, I mean, he was a very shameful performance. That was you know, very defensive. You know, yeah. Eleven men, you know, in midfield, you know, it was, the, it was it was completely horrible. But you know, at at uh, the Stadium of Dreams or Theatre of Dreams, whatever it is, or you know, or the Theatre of Nightmares, uh, I think that uh, Mourinho will have to show a bit more ambition. And you know, and uh, and and I think that the, the recent wins against Mourinho will count against him for this particular game because the fans and the media and the press and the pundits will be expecting Manchester United to go at Liverpool and to beat them but Jürgen Klopp you know that um, that German devil you know with that big smile of his you know I think he's got some really interesting ideas the normal and I, one and, uh, yeah the normal one and I think that he's got uh, uh, some tactics against uh, Mourinho that will go against Mourinho so guys just to round up a quick look at the transfer links uh, Louis Hello. what a very very exciting one for you a man like Lorente going to oh, Chelsea. Christ above. <laughs> oh my God. This is wicked. This is this is splendid news. Bravo. Uh, he's worse than Giroud. He's another lamppost. <laughs> I don't want one. No. We've got we've got our strikers. We don't need any more. Any tears for um, Batshuayi going to Swansea, possibly? Ah. Uh, <laughs> If he, if he was to go on loan, then, you know, it, it, it could do him good. What, what he does need is he needs to play week in, week out uh, mm-hmm. and get some Premier League minutes under his belt because he's, he's not quite there yet. He's, he's got all the right attributes, but he's just fallen short. Mm, a bit raw. Yeah, too, a little bit raw. He just needs to ch- fine-tune it a little bit and it'll be, it'll, it'll definitely be up there as, you know, I'm ready to go. Pascal, Wait. Arsenal Wait. linked to another striker, Perotta. Perotti to Arsenal from Torino seriously do Arsenal need another striker madness well you know I mean you know Frankie B it, it, it's an interesting one because you know after that I always looked to a midfielder you know for the last few years he was always midfielders and Num- a number 10 know, it was, absolutely he was always a number 10 but this time around he's a striker and you know, there's some very interesting rumors from I've been reading a lot of French uh, blogs and 
you know, there's concerns about Sanchez going to Atletico Madrid, Griezmann going to Manchester United, you know, um, and perhaps, perhaps Wenger is, pl is, is planning a replacement to, to Sanchez, you know. Sanchez also has been said to be a bit concerned about the return of Giroud, and how, uh, you know, and, um, you know, he was promised that, that, you know, the center forward position, to which he's been good at to some, to some extent, you know, he's given Arsenal a different dimension, but, you know, I think that, um, Sanchez is very much is a is a winner at all costs, you know, and he wants to win trophies. And he's concerned that he's playing the best football of his life at the moment, and he's not, um, you know, the, recuperating the right level of of success, personal success, but also collective success. And you know, perhaps uh, you know a team like that, Telco Madrid, can give him that 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 challenge. But even though I, I still believe that he will be the wrong move for Sanchez. You know, I think Sanchez would be better off playing at Juventus where he can win some trophies and guarantee a good Champions League run. I think Atletico Madrid are a very good side, but they're never quite, the, you know, the, that team that wins the titles, you know, on, on the yearly basis. Uh, but look, you know, if Arsenal and Arsene Wenger are interested in another striker, why not? But I would say, you know, it's quite strange that Danny Welbeck has returned. We've got Sanchez pretty Very fit. We've got, yeah. we've got Giroud back. You know, we still got other strikers, you know, young, young strikers, you know, that uh, Arsenal have also developing. So, you know, it, it's beggar's belief, you know, and, and Lucas Perez also can score goals. He can play striker as well. So. Alright guys, that's our time. I'd like to thank Lou. I'd like to thank Ben Jurassa. I'd like to thank Pascal. Join us again next week for another Pep Talk UK podcast. Boom. Thank you.